New you in 2021, are you ready for it? Uh, I know a lot of you guys are thinking about New Year's resolutions. I'm gonna give you my thoughts on them right now. Hey, yo, what's up tribe? How many of you wanna lose weight this year? How many of you were thinking, hey, I'm gonna read 20, 30, 40, 50 books this year? How many of you figured, hey, I'm gonna learn a new language in the next 365 days? Let's be real. The vast majority of you will not actually get through that, no matter how much you say you're going to. I don't like New Year's resolutions, but I have a good reason for that. According to the Times Tribune, 80% of people who think that they're going to do something in the new year, who make a New Year's resolution, fail at that New Year's resolution before February. That's just two months into that particular year. The same source suggests that by the end of the year, the majority are going to fail. In fact, only 8% of people who make New Year's resolutions actually achieve them by the year's end. That's eight out of 100 people. Those are not good odds. And that's why I don't like New Year's resolutions. I don't think that they really come with enough meat and just saying you're going to resolve to do something. Well, what does that actually mean? That's why I don't set New Year's resolutions and neither should you. But in this video, what we're gonna talk about is what you can do to actually be more deliberate and better next year than you were coming into this year. In business, we don't have New Year's resolutions. What we end up doing is have a strategic plan with objectives that are designed to get our business from point A to point B, point C, and point D, that usually we're looking one year, three years, and five years. And so this is the framework that we're gonna talk about today in terms of thinking about many of the New Year's resolutions that you may have put forth coming into this new year. So let's talk about this for just a little bit. How is a strategic plan different than a New Year's resolution? Well, there's several reasons. Let's look at them. And let's, uh, let me talk about a story to really emphasize the first point. In late December 2018, a group of friends and I met up with another friend. We were all from doc school, and uh, that friend, she lived in Puerto Rico. And what that meant is that we were getting the local treatment. Man, I gotta tell you, if you're going to go visit some place that you've never been before, getting that local treatment is always the best way. But it's not without some caveats. I couldn't speak Spanish at the time. And while a lot of people in Puerto Rico can speak English, there are some little pockets where that's not going to happen. And they're usually not going to be in touristy areas, exactly where I was. And so in this really bland moment, we were at a Walgreens, we were going to grab some beer and I go to check out and we got separated from my friend. And of course the clerk looks at me and says, Paga aquí. And I had no idea what this woman had said to me. And I was just stricken with so much panic. It wasn't really the first time in this trip that I've had panic. When I was in the airport, I didn't have an idea as to what they were saying over the loudspeaker either. And so at that moment, I started to really think about this, this concept of not speaking Spanish, which is spoken all over the world. So I'm on the flight home and I was just reflecting on that particular moment, but also those moments where I had no idea whether or not they were calling my flight. And I realized that I needed to learn Spanish. And so essentially I did make this, this resolution in my head. I didn't call it that, but I did make a resolution to go and learn Spanish at that point. The first thing that you really want to think about is that a strategic plan is usually guided by a firm's mission or vision statement. I'm not going to get into the, the nuance of the difference between a mission and a, and a vision statement, but just understand that it's essentially why you're doing something. It has to be super important. Businesses without a good firm vision or mission and individuals without that usually stumble around a lot. And that's why I think a lot of these New Year's resolutions actually fail. So when it came to learning Spanish, I had to really visualize myself as a Spanish speaking individual, not native, not even fluent, but being able to have a very basic exchange with someone who didn't speak English, who spoke only Spanish. And so this vision became part of what I wanted to see myself as. So as I started to visualize my future, speaking Spanish, visiting not just Puerto 
Puerto Rico, but Mexico and maybe Costa Rica, Peru, I, I, I realized that I wanted it to become part of my being. I wanted to be known as someone who could speak Spanish. And so this vision for myself started to come into fruition and it started to affect my mission to learn this particular language. So it wasn't a resolution to learn the language. It was a mission to learn the language. It was a strong why. Okay, so that actually drove me past that hardest part. You see, I, I didn't even know where to start. And, and I think when it comes to something like learning a new language or a new skill, finding the resources you need is probably one of the harder elements of that. Now, thankfully, here in 2018 and 2021, we have YouTube, and that's exactly where I started. I figured there had to be someone out there who put some, some YouTube videos. And so that was step one. Step two was finding podcasts, and step three was finding Duolingo. And that is a critical element to getting me to the next couple steps with regards to making it part of who I was, becoming someone who learned Spanish. Dos años después, yo puedo leer entender y hablar español. So make your new goals, make your resolutions, whatever you want to call them, part of yourself. If you want to read books, see yourself as someone who's reading a book when they're off time. So in business, we don't necessarily work with goals or resolutions, but we work with these things called objectives. And there's a reason why we use that particular term. In business school, we teach objectives to be smart, uh, just as a way of thinking about it. What does smart stand for? Specific, measurable, achievable, reasonable, and time bound. Time bound's easy. You want to do it in a year, right? Maybe you do want to do it in five years, but you want to get started in this particular year. But either way, you probably have a good time frame that you're working with. For me, I knew that I wanted to visit my friend again in Puerto Rico and surprise her by speaking Spanish. Specific and measurable, basically the same things, essentially I mean, what does it mean? So if we look at Spanish, for me, I actually had a very... Uh, probably the loosest that you would think about is I just knew that I wanted to be comfortable speaking. Uh, if you want to be more specific with what I was looking for, I should have been able to order, I should have been able to get through the airport, hear my flight being called, and as I just mentioned, I want to be able to order for my friend in Spanish and surprise her. So that essentially formed the specific and measurable element of what I was looking for. The achievable and reasonable is something that is an ongoing I want to use the word conversation that you're going to have with yourself throughout this entire process and that's going to get to the next thing that we're going to talk about. With this achievable and reasonable element, I knew that I wasn't going to be fluent in a, in a year. There's no way I could dedicate the time necessary to do that with everything else going on in my life. However, I did have to be strategic about what I was doing. And this is part three of what you need to do with your objectives or resolutions for the next year. The idea here is that you want to plan for the now. You want to be strategic. And that's the whole idea of what a strategic plan is. So if we're going to use Duolingo and the Spanish resolution, that just meant that I had to be as regular as possible with what I was going to do. And eventually what was reasonable came to fruition. So being strategic meant spending five minutes a day doing Duolingo or reading some Spanish news or listening to a Spanish podcast at the very minimum five minutes a day. When it comes to the other resolution that many people have, reading more books, if you wanted to read 20 books this year, what does that mean? That means at least one book every two weeks. Is that reasonable? Only you can answer that. Some people may only have time to read one book a month. That's great. That's 12 books that's still moving forward. Let's say you want to lose weight. What is reasonable for losing weight? And I, I mention that specifically because I think a lot of people going into a new year think that they want to lose a couple of pounds, but they don't understand what it truly takes to do that. And, and, and I'm not saying it's difficult. I'm saying that I think a lot of people think that it's easier than it actually is. If you are unhealthy, then please talk to a doctor before you get into an exercise regimen and maybe hurt yourself. And that's especially important as we move on to this last piece that we're going to talk about. This next part is actually really critical and actually quite important to making sure that you can achieve what you're looking to achieve in the next one, three, or five years. 
businesses handle this so much better than people do because they have to. And I think especially when it comes to New Year's resolutions, people aren't so set on them that when they fail, they're like, well, why bother? And so you need to plan for failure. All right, so that's right. Just in case you forgot what I said at the very beginning of the video, you are statistically more likely to fail at this New Year's resolution, at these New Year's goals, than not. And so if you plan for that, it's easier to handle and get back up on that horse and keep riding. What are you going to do when you have a piece of cake or a donut and you're trying to cut sugar out of your diet? Or what's gonna happen if you don't read for a week for some, for whatever reason, say it gets busy at work or anything along those lines? What are you gonna do if you miss your streak when it comes to learning that new language? It's okay. Here's a little secret. It's okay to fail. Almost everyone fails. And if you want to think about it, you don't want to get let that failure get into your head. Two steps forward, one step back, it's still one step forward from where you were before. And so if you continue to push forward in your goals, you're more likely to achieve some semblance of what you started looking to do at the beginning of the year. Perfection is nearly impossible. All you're looking to do is make yourself a better person next year than you were last year. And you can do that as long as you're okay with the idea that you're going to trip every now and then. Just going over what we talked about here, you can have New Year's resolutions. I know I said I don't like them, but you have to be as strategic as possible about them. Make sure that you have a good, strong reason for doing it. Part of that is looking inside yourself and making sure that you visualize that change that you want to happen. Two is making sure that you're being smart about your goals and your objectives. Three, being strategic about it. Four, being okay to fail and learning from that failure and adjusting your goals by the end of the year appropriately. Just one more thing. I know that I said you need to have these smart objectives. There are some really good New Year's resolutions that you can have for yourself that don't necessarily fit into that smart paradigm. Maybe you want to eliminate some negativity in your life. Maybe you yourself just want to be a more positive person. These are great New Year's resolutions or objectives for a year to be better next year than you were last year that I understand that it might be a little tougher to put into that smart paradigm. Go for it. I think that it's great. And if you can't fit it into that smart paradigm, don't worry about it. Hey Tribe, thanks so much for checking out this first video here. If it's brand new, if we're in the early parts of January 2021, welcome. This is a new endeavor. I plan to post every Monday. If this is like 2023 and you're checking out some of my old videos, I'm sure it's a lot less polished than some of what I've done recently, but hopefully still just as informative. All right, Tribe. Hey, thanks for checking out my first video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you do have some New Year's resolutions that you want to share, feel free to post down. If you have some ideas for content that you'd love to see on this channel, please, again, feel free to post that down below. In the meantime, don't forget to subscribe, click that notification bell. I'll see you every Monday with a regular video to help you be a better person, but I may also post other videos throughout the week as I develop this particular channel. I'm looking forward to it. So again, don't forget to subscribe, hit the notify button, and I'll see you every Monday. And I'm hoping that you're a little bit better today than you were yesterday, and I'm looking forward to you being a little bit better tomorrow than you were today.